custodian of the county, sorcerer of the city, temper of the town, scamp of the camp, and village blockhead. Oh, no, not here. <laughs> Welcoming you to another grand conclave of the Harlem Hospitality Club. Today's agenda is just loaded with music and jive. But before we give it the gun, let's start the fun by meeting our first applicant for membership into the Harlem Hospitality Club, and her name is Bernice Lyons from Gastonia, North Carolina. Hello. Hello. How are you? Fine. How are oh, you? You look mighty pretty today. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, is, is it warm out today? No, it isn't. Oh, it's it is. It's comfortable. It is comfortable. Is yes. it warm in here? Well, not altogether. Do you wear the jacket all the time? Not all the time. Well, what would you call that? Three quarter or, or half or what? Well, I don't know. What do you call it? Yeah. Well, I call it a fur jacket. Well, that's what I call it. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What kind of fur is that? Well... Yeah, that's nice. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, uh, you, you're, you're real cute, though, laying all, joke, <coughs> laying all jokes aside. Now, uh, according to your application, um, Bernice, you have something on your conscience. Is that right? Yes, I have. Are uh, you married? Yes, I am. Well, I can understand. Now, what's on your conscience? Well, uh, my husband refuses to speak to me. Your husband won't talk to you? No. Oh, this is serious. And why? Well, um... I don't know. He saw me with a man a few nights ago. Mm -hmm. Under unusual circumstances. What's that? <laughs> With unusual circumstances. Unusual circumstances? <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, I don't know whether to tell you to go ahead or quit right here. <laughs> but I mean, we'll, we'll take a chance. Go ahead. What do you mean, unusual circumstances? Well, uh, the other evening, he decided to take me to a movie. Oh, yes. And uh, after he'd purchased the ticket, mm -hmm. He told me to wait in the lobby, and he'd go across the street to get cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was gone about 15 to 20 minutes. Yes. And uh, I didn't feel like waiting any longer. I know. So I decided to go in and find a seat alone. Find a seat alone? Yeah. Oh, you was mad then. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand. <laughs> so I went in the movie, and uh, it was dark. Yes. And uh, after trying to find my seat, there was a man sitting on the end of the seat. Sitting on the end of the seat? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Paid half fare, maybe. Well, <laughs> could be. Yeah, I just want to know you wouldn't have take up all the seats. They paid half fare and sit on the end. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so he refused to uh, get up to let me uh, go by. Oh, oh so, he did. Uh, yeah. One of those ringside Romeos. <laughs> yeah, I know. So as I attempted to go in the seat, well, after I put my left foot in, yeah, like. Still couldn't get by. He wouldn't move. He wouldn't move. Mm -hmm. And later, after I, after I'd gotten my foot all both in, mm -hmm. he decided to get up. Oh, he did. And just as he got up uh, out of the seat, yeah. well, there we were, and he tripled. You and did. fell in, we both fell in the aisle. No. <laughs> you, you, you laid him out in the aisle. <laughs> yeah. There you were in the aisle, and everybody's laughing. That's embarrassing, too. Then what happened? Well, uh, he was, he was a a stout man, oh, mercy. and uh, I was excited. I mean, it happened, and I didn't know what was all, what ha what had happened really. Uh huh. So um, he got up. Yeah. So did I. Yeah. And he said, "Now can you get can you get in?" And I said, "Well, wait a minute." And I looked down, and I didn't have my shoe on. I said, "Wait, let me find my shoe." First. <laughs> yeah. So you went back looking for your shoe. And uh, at that moment, my husband came in, and uh -huh. he saw us in the aisle. You and him. Yeah. He said, "Now what goes on here?" What? <laughs> What circumstances? Huh? So wait a minute now, and your husband refuses to talk to you, that's and that's right. on your conscience. That's well, you bring him up here, and we'll straighten it out for you. You hear? Very All right. Well. Here's your membership card. Thank All you. right. Thank you very, very much. Gee, what circumstances? She laid him in the aisle. You know, our first singing guest for the day is slender, tender, and tall, and here she is. She was a member on our program not long ago. Hello, Kitty. 
Hello, Willie. How Kitty DeChavez is your name. Quite right. And uh, you were a member just uh, not long ago, weren't you? Uh -huh. And you told us that you sang. That's right. And our program is always willing to give the youngster a chance and uh, in the business, so we're going to give you a chance today as one of our singing guests. Kitty, what are you going to sing for us? St. Louis Blues. Well, let's go to Missouri. Here we go. I hate to see that evening sun go down. Club. Hello, Annie. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Huh? Do you always talk like that? Yes, I guess I do. Yes, I guess you do, too. And uh, you married? Yes, I am. Yeah. What's your hubby's name? Moses. M Moses? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a biblical name. He should be a very fine fellow. How long have you been married? Five years. Five long years. Where'd you marry? Alexandria. Alexandria, Louisiana. Yes. How far is that from New Orleans? It's across the river, isn't it? 193 miles. 193 miles, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a big river, all right. <laughs> what a river that is. And uh, how, did you, how did you meet Moses? At the river? No. <laughs> no. I met him while he was in the army. Huh? I met him while he was in the army. You met him while I he was in the army? Now, wait a minute now. This is serious. Shut up. You met him while you were in the while he was in the army. Yeah. Where'd you meet him at? Camp Cleveland, Louisiana. Oh, in Camp Cleveland, wonderful camp too. And what were you doing in the camp? I was working out there. Oh, you were working out there. What yeah. kind of work were you doing? I was a clerk. Was a clerk. Mm -hmm. And how'd you happen to meet Moses? Well, I was standing at the counter one day, and he and came he... in the door, and yeah. I looked up, and he winked at me, and I winked back, and oh. it's been going on ever since. <laughs> What's that? So you, you winked at him and he winked at you? And no, he winked at me oh, first. Oh, he winked at you for yeah. flirt, huh? Yeah. Did he, how'd he wink? Did like uh, one eye. One eye. And, and, you, and you winked back? Both eyes. Bo both <laughs> eyes. <laughs> you wasn't winking, you was cautious. <laughs> and, and you said that's been going on ever since? Uh-huh. Yeah, how long now? Five years. Five years? Yeah. It's been winking back at one another. <laughs> well, when did, he, when did he propose to you? Um... Well, I guess he didn't propose. He sent me a ring while he was away. He sent you a ring? Yeah, and I took for granted he meant it. Oh, well, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Where was he at the time when he sent the ring? Fort Knox, Kentucky. Fort Knox, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. What did he do, send you a gold ring? <laughs> <laughs> That's where all the bullion is, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, didn't he propose to you? He just sent you the ring and you took it for granted? Then well, when he came back, he said, you got the ring? <laughs> 
And what did you say? Yes. You said yes? Mm -hmm. So then you then you got married? Yeah. Yeah, didn't didn't he say something sweet to you? Something yeah. pretty to you? What'd he say? Well, I can't tell you yeah, that. Oh, yeah, please do. <laughs> oh, go on now. We want to know. <laughs> You want to whisper to me and tell me? No. You don't want to whisper to uh, me? Well, tell me something. What did he say? It's a secret. Is that a secret? Mm -hmm. Well, are you happy? Yes, I well, am. Well, that's important. And we want you to remain happy and say, where's Moses now, by the way? He's working. He's, what kind of work does he do? He's a foreman in a factory. Foreman in a factory? Mm -hmm. Does he still wink? Well. <laughs> you don't know, do you? No. You better watch that wink, you know. <laughs> All right, you're now a member. You're now a full-fledged member of the Harlem Hospitality Club Winking Division. Thank and you. Good luck to you. And bye-bye. And Marty will take care of you over there. Thank you very much. All right, next on our agenda is the presentation to our members of our next special guest, and we're happy to have him back. And here he is, that wizard of the keyboard, Kirby Walker. Hello, Kirby. Hello, Willie. And you're going to sing My Sugar is So Refined? Right, Willie. Built like a jug of wine. Look out. Look out now. <laughs> She's one of them high-class kind. She never wears a hat. She buys a chapeau. She goes to see a cinema, but never a show. My sugar is so refined. She's got a real high-class mind. She never buys a dress. It's always a frock. She always finds a time piece up, but never a clock. She says tomato instead of tomato. She says potato instead of potato. And you should see the way she holds a cup of tea with just two fingers, and she sticks out three. My sugar is so refined, she's got a real high-class mind. She never shares a kiss, she lets her lips unite. Man, it feels like kissing, every kiss is dynamite. I wonder what she thinks of every time I hold her tight. She's so refined. applicant for membership into the Harlem Hospitality Club, and her name is Noreen Tate. Isn't that right? Yes, Noreen Tate, right. and you're from Parsons, Kansas. That's right. How are you, Noreen? Fine. How Gee, are you, Willie? Oh, I'm fine. It's a pretty hat you have on. Isn't sure. that cute? I like that. Isn't that Thank lovely? You. you know, I, uh, did you make that? No, I didn't. You didn't? Did You bought it? Yes. A friend of mine made it for oh, me. A friend of yours made it? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, is it hard to get off? No, there's nothing much to it, Let me as see you it. can see. Yeah, well, I can see that. That's, that's why I want to know. There's more band to it than there is hat there. <laughs> please. Uh, please, let me have it. <laughs> May I you have want it? it? Yeah, Pins and all? Pins, too? <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm an old pinner. And uh, <laughs> my sugar is... <laughs> well, uh, don't you, uh... You, 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 put, you put the pins in now. <laughs> Oh, Noreen, wait a minute. Noreen, you stuck me. My sugar. I asked for it. Looks like I'm getting it too, huh? My sugar is so rich. I, I see according to your application here, Noreen, that... Now you see how it looks, don't you? Yes, Willet. Uh, do, I, do I need some extra hair? No, Wilhelmina. I don't, Wilhelmina. Oh, please! No. Noreen, uh, I can see by your application that uh, you were formerly a school teacher, huh? Don't bring that up. That was years ago. <laughs> years ago? All right, then we won't bring it up years ago. Uh, years later. All right, now, uh, you know, uh, Noreen, uh, saleswomen claim that uh, women, uh, that men uh, would rather, uh, uh, they would rather sell to men than women. They claim that men are better shoppers. Now, what do you say about that? Well, women are always the best shoppers. So what do you do now, by the way? Oh, I'm sort of a housewife. Sort of a housewife. Part oh, man, time. I say, I, part time. <laughs> what? And uh, do you uh, do you agree with the saleswomen that uh, that men make better shoppers than women? No, I certainly well, I, don't. Well, I do. 
I don't. Well, I do. For those Women are who... always the best shoppers. Of course, you can't make a dollar go very far these days. Well, a man can. How far it can be stretched. A woman can stretch it more than the man. Well, that ain't good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, a man... A woman a man... always knows when she's getting her correct weight. She knows the quality of her merchandise. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the grocer can put his hand on the scale, and a man wouldn't know the difference. Oh, he can oh, give no. you rotten eggs, and you wouldn't know the difference. Oh, no, no. Now, you see, I disagree with you, because a man will go out to buy something, and you, you say a woman can stretch a dollar further? Sure. Well, I disagree with you, because if a man goes to a counter and something's too high, he can stretch that dollar right away from that counter and go to another counter. That's why I say that men... Isn't that right, men? No. Uh, yes. And a man can yes. go to a... No, 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 yes. Another thing, a man can go to a counter and ask for something, and you can get a half-rotten... Uh, a head of lettuce or a, you, the, any, a man will take anything. He oh, doesn't even yeah. look to see well, what he's getting for his dollar. Well, a woman can go there and get a whole rotten head of lettuce, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, you can just say what you want, honey. No, now, you, I don't care. <laughs> you know, I don't care. I don't care. A woman shops more and carefully I still than say a, that a woman does not. A man can do better all the time. Well, but a yeah. man never. Look at some of the uh, women been picked. They don't. <laughs> well, I've been not going to this door, but I think we're going to let that go. Here, I'm, I tell you what you can they do. And you can't glass. give yourself a membership card, and I can. So I'm going to give you one. You're a fool. Thank you very much. Bye bye. And good luck. All right. Good. Oh, yeah. Here's your hat, too. Thank you very much. I think I look real pretty in that. <laughs> Well, we hear next from our musical committee consisting of Lou Mel Morgan at the piano, Ham Jackson on the guitar, and Gobba Gobba Duke Jones on the bass, and the boys will now try to get together and offer a little ditty entitled, I'm Just Minding My Business. Here we go. Business shop better, I don't care. I'm minding my business, baby, my business is you. I don't care what Nori is saying. Just minding my business, that's for you and that's to do. Now if you had a gold mine up in the sky, you wouldn't turn it over to another guy. Just minding my business, baby, my business is you. I'm minding my business, baby, my business is you. Just minding my business, that's the human thing to do. If I saw you sleep on a railroad track, I'd never come back, I'd just let you snore, look out. Just minding my business, Baby, my business is you. I'm just minding my business. Baby, my business is you. I'm just minding my business. That's the human thing to do. If you was a freight train on the loose, I'd crawl on your track, bum, and be your caboose. I'm just minding my business. Baby, my business is you. I'm just minding my business. Baby, my business is you. Just minding my business, that's the human thing to do. They call me the high potentate. I can't help it if everybody thinks I'm great, because I'm, I'm minding my business. business. Baby, my business, business you do. I got that over with. Baby, my business is you. 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 Baby, my business Once again, it's time to visit with one of our older members for a little journey down memory lane. And her name is Ciola Carruthers from Richmond, Virginia. Thank you. How you do? How are you? Wonderful. You seemed uh, pretty spry while the music was going on there. Oh, yeah. How old are you? I'm this, uh, 64. 64. And as spry as that? Wonderful. <laughs> you'll soon be 65. You'll soon be 65. My next birthday. Yeah, well, next birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you were born in Richmond, Virginia? I wasn't born in Richmond. I'm married in Richmond. Oh, I was you born in uh, North Carolina. In North Carolina? Come a little closer to the mic, honey, please. Born in North Carolina. What part of North Carolina? Richmond. What part of North Carolina were you born? In uh, the south part of North in Carolina. The southern part of North Carolina, <laughs> huh? <laughs> and... Uh, and uh, can you remember, can you remember the early days, your early days in, in South Carolina? Yeah. You can? What can you remember? I can remember that we used to give cakewalking there. Used to give cakewalks? You mean the dance? In the church, yeah. We oh, give cakewalk in the oh, really? church. Oh, really? That's right. They used, that's, and uh, have the... uh, organs to play for us to walk for cake. Oh, for the, walk for the cake? That's right. Is that, is that where it got its name from the dance, a cake walk? That's when they used right. to, all the members, I suppose, would bake cakes. And in other words, it was a cake contest. That's right. Yeah, it was? Big cake contest. Big cake contest. And the girl that walked the best 
Not uh, shaky, but oh, just no, of sturdy. Course not. Yeah, just steady and with a lot of poise. Yeah, just hold a hand steady and walk. To the rhythm of the organ? That's right. You had so many, so many hours to walk. Uh huh. Oh. Without without faltering, without That's falling right. one way or the other. Right. And did you study. did you ever win that contest? Oh, I win two, win you, three. You, you you won three contests. That's and is right. that why you were spry and, and That's walking? That's right. And that just keeps me spry. It keeps you spry. That's do you right. do you think that you could uh, if we if we had just a little music, something like uh, a pretty girl is like a melody or something like that? I don't know if we could play that or not. Is that clear? Is that okay? No, we better not play that. Just play just a little rhythm, Lou. Where's Lou? <laughs> Lou Mel. All right, then Lou Mel had to go change his music for the next act. All right, but now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hum it for you. I'm going to hum it for you. I'll hum the tune that you were just dancing to. I'm minding my business. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-day. Walk it pretty now. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da
What a team. Now, how do, you, how do you manage to handle such big guys? Oh, well, being a woman, I guess they respect me. <laughs> oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, suppose, suppose they didn't obey you, then what? Big as they are and little as you are. Oh, well, they've seen my temper, so I guess they do not. They've your what? <laughs> they've seen my temper. Oh, they have? Mm -hmm. So what do you do, jump right up on a ladder and slap one of them? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, all right, now, 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 all right, now, I'm, I'm six foot one, I weigh 214. Now, suppose I want to become a, a fighter, and I want you to manage me now. Well, what, what would you suggest that I do? The first thing? Mm-hmm. Lose some of that stomach of yours. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, we, uh, we, won't, we won't go into that. Here, uh, here is your membership card. Now, you are a member of our club, and we are your manager. And we have good luck to you and your fighters. Bye-bye. And there goes Tiny Patterson. Okay. Well, for anyone with a long puss, there's nothing like listening to our little kitty. Only we meet our special singing guest, Kitty the Chavez. Hello, Kitty. How you feel, Mom? I'm okay. What are you going to say this time, Kitty? Well, this time I do a little ditty dance to the name of Fuzzy Wuzzy. Fuzzy Wuzzy? Uh -huh. Fuzzy Wuzzy. There's a fuzzy wuzzy dog upon the way. Who always is feeling gay. She isn't very glamorous. Neither is she amorous. But here's one thing you all can say. She's just a wild little hussy. Baby, she can solid cut some rugs, but she's a killer, dull a daddy, and a jitterbug. And she can boogie boy. I mean that boogie boogie. She brings them from Park Avenue. You get the fat foot Flutie and Susie Q. She's a little devil, strictly on the level. Good as she is bad. But a wild little devil always on the level. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.